Ladies and gentlemen, join us tonight, Stephen Kinsella, founder and executive editor of Libertarian Papers, founder and director of the Center for the Study of Innovative Freedom, and a member of the editorial board of Reason Papers. He's a registered patent attorney. That doesn't mean he's for intellectual property. And former <laughs> adjunct professor at South Texas College of Law. He's published a number of articles and books, including... Um, it, it just it, it's an incredible library covering international law, the application of libertarian principles to legal topics, and I'm I'm honored to have him on tonight for this most important topic before the liberty movement tonight. I know this is a little bit of inside baseball for some people, but it does raise some very important issues, and we are talking, of course, about the RonPaul.com domain debacle, Stefan. Thank you so much for joining us and, and for being willing to take on this troubling issue. Sure. Glad to be here, Adam. How you doing? Outstanding. Outstanding. Despite uh, having just sat through the State of the Union address, believe it or not, I'm doing quite well. And, um, you know, have, having been able to see it through through different eyes is certainly makes it, makes it a lot easier, as you can imagine. But, Stefan, if, if you would, please, first, you're... you're uh, Give us your understanding of of intellectual property and, as, as as a concept, and and specifically how it applies to the issue of domain names. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll give you the elevator pitch, which is um, look the, the two worst types of IP or patent and copyright. This is the types that we uh, we talk about often criticize. This is trademark here in this case. The uh, the problem with IP law, especially patent and copyright, is that basically the government is granting a right to control to someone's already existing and owned property to some third party. Um, so it's like give it's like in your neighborhood, you know, if you want to paint your house orange, you can do that. But if you signed an agreement with your neighbors that you will not paint your house orange without their permission, then you've contractually given them a right to control. Some aspect of your property, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you agree to it. Well, in the case of IP, the government grants that control right to a third party just because they have invented something or written a song or something like that. Um, so trademarks are basically the right to prevent other people from using a similar name or brand name or product name that you're using if it might dilute the value of your mark etc. Okay. So what happened is we have this internet which arose from, you know, the Defense Department's ARPANET back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. And the United States government turned over the right to assign names to domains to the uh, to the ICANN, which is an allegedly private group, but they have like 100 governments on their sort of advisory board. So it's still not completely private and free. And as part of the turning over to this quasi-private company, they had to agree to adopt these domain name dispute policies to make sure that there weren't trademark uh, problems. In other words, that domain names wouldn't be too similar to other companies' names or, or whatever, like IBM.com. You know, that might not be uh, – IBM wouldn't be happy about that, Coca-Cola.com, et cetera. So they established these policies – that gives the owner of a trademark uh, or in related situations the right to go to some kind of arbitration, they call it, but to apply state trademark law to take away domains from owners of domains uh, in cases where it's similar to a trademark infringement. And that's what's happening here in this case. Well, well, let me ask you then, just to clarify, I mean, if, if I own AdamVersusTheMan.com and someone starts AdamVersusTheMan.org, but it's an Adam versus the Man bashing site, damn, I don't want to give anybody in the audience any ideas. <laughs> um, don't I have an interest? Shouldn't I be able to tell them, you can't do that? You can't, you can't start another website that sounds similar and use it against my business interests? <laughs> Uh, you may have an interest, but I don't think you have a right, uh, or you shouldn't have the right under the law. Um, I mean, look, you might have an interest in not having a competitor set up across the street from you either to compete with you and steal your, quote, customers. But really, under libertarianism, you don't own your customers. And likewise, you don't own the value of anything you've done either. You only own the physical integrity of your property. Um, I mean, Rothbard talks about this in The Ethics of Liberty in his, in his chapter on knowledge, true and false, which is available free online 
at Mises.org, uh, he explains exactly why reputation rights, for example, are totally invalid because to own the reputation would be like owning your customers or owning what people think about you. You mean um, I don't own the brains of everyone in my audience? <laughs> well, not completely. No, not literally. Well, a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit, right? I mean, from 9 p.m. to midnight, five nights a week, I do, right? In your metaphorical sense, you own them, Adam. I, I grant you that. Okay. It's, it's just a metaphor. All right. Well, I, I also want to clarify something before we get into the, the, the meat of this issue. The United Nations, ronpaul.com, put on, the, on their website under the, the uh, post... Ron Paul calls on United Nations to confiscate domain names of his supporters, referring to ronpaul.com and ronpaul.org. <coughs> Earlier today, Ron Paul filed an international UDRP complaint against ronpaul.com and ronpaul.org with WIPO, a global governing body that is an agency of the United Nations. The complaint calls on the agency to expropriate the two domain names from his supporters without compensation and hand them over to Ron Paul. Now, no one is disputing that last sentence that it's calling on the agency to expropriate. But how could they do that if they're not using force, if they're not government? And is this really, because now this is the issue of dispute. Some people are saying, oh, this is not a, a government thing. Ron Paul's not using the government to steal his supporters' property. This is a, a, a private thing, that's, and it's a contractual thing. And, and when you sign up for any IPO or for, for, any, uh, for any URL in the world and you claim a URL, you agree to this authority. Who's right here? Well, both things you said are actually true. Um, I, I think that owning a domain name is not the same as owning a physical object like a house, but let's think about what contracts are. Contracts, as Rothbard himself showed in his chapter on contracts in The Ethics of Liberty, a contract is just the way the owner of a scarce resource exercises his rights to get through either to transfer ownership or to have a contract with someone to agree on how they can use it. So when you have a contract with the Internet, the Internet is a network of physical connections that are owned by different uh, you know, infrastructure and Internet uh, backbone providers and people like this. When you enter into contracts with these people, that ends up resulting in your contractual right, which is distributed across a group of people, to control uh, a certain ISP, that is a certain numerical identifier or address, and to give it a certain name. So – and th those are scarce in the same sense that they're unique, right? I mean, every domain is unique. That's why they can reach you by typing um, Adam versus the man dot com instead of they reach five different potential sites. They only reach one. The problem is not that. Uh, the problem is that in a totally free society, when you have a private internet, uh, there would be no trademark law because trademark law is totally illegitimate, just like patent and copyright and defamation and reputation rights are. So there's no way that these uh, these internet sub service companies would re force you to abide by dispute resolution rules, which would transfer your pro your your domain to someone based upon similar names or something like that. Um, so what's happened here is the United States has the strongest interest in the world in foisting its IP system on the rest of the world mm. because of Hollywood, the music industry. So it has pushed and twisted the arms of the rest of the world. With a network of treaties, intellectual property treaties, administered in part by the United Nations WIPO, which you just mentioned, the World Intellectual Property Organization. So this is basically a, an arm of the U.S. government and Hollywood, the NPAA. Mm. And then the U.S. turned the Internet over to a quasi-private corporation. Sounds a little bit like the Fed, right? Right. Um, and then required them to adopt these UDRP rules, which you're talking about which worked with WIPO and adopted the trademark and intellectual property rules that the, the big content providers wanted. So, so, so you're saying that you could, you could make the argument that this is a private, independent organization, but there's no way that you could make the argument that this authority and the parameters of it are not derived from government coercion. It's, co it's completely corrupted by the government's influence, and it, basically this is another alternate mechanism that the governments have set up which allows you to enforce trademark rights. So it looks quasi-private, but in my view it's really just um, the governments allowing trademark holders to enforce um, uh, their trademark rights. So is and Ron I'm, Paul I'm, – I'm, I'm, Adam, imagine if tomorrow you just got a notice that the uh, – that uh, your ISP or – uh, is, is taking Adam versus the man and giving it to someone else, right. your registrar. Um, 
Now, you could argue, well, it's just a contractual right. You don't really have it like a house. But imagine how devastating that would be to you. Of course. Well, so is it fair to say that Ron Paul is using government to steal property from his supporters? Yes. So the people that are as upset with this, as many libertarians and Ron Paul supporters are, uh, are, are justified. Well, what he's doing is he's using the existing legal system, which he didn't create. He's doing what a lot of people would do. They are basically – if you're faced with a choice, uh, if someone offers you a piece of property for $250,000 and you know that you can go to the local zone, you know, zoning commission and get them to use eminent domain and hand it over to you for $50,000 or whatever, then you can save money by doing that. Whether you should or should not is maybe a personal ethical issue or a practical issue. Right. But it's clear that the procedure should not exist. Um, how people use it, I mean, you cannot set up these procedures that allow expropriation of property and expect people not to use them. The, the problem is not so much – I don't think this is a case of abuse. It's just a case of using the law that exists. Um, the problem, of course, is the law that exists. The, the, the government should totally get out of the entire internet system, and of course, if they would get rid of their uh, obscene and outrageous – uh, IP laws, including trademark, uh, then this this would not even be possible. Um, and by the way, you know, people talk about the damage done by copyright and patent, and they're right. I think they're they're the worst. So the copyright is probably the worst. It's giving rise to almost a police state in terms of the government using it as an excuse to crack down on the internet, which is very important as a tool for freedom, uh, and to put people in jail. Uh, and patents are costing hundreds of billions of dollars a year for innovation and the economy. But trademarks are very bad too. They're used routinely and quite often for legal bullying and for expropriation of property, as in this case. Um, I mean, I think the Libertarian Party of, I think New Hampshire or even the National Party, they're trying to prevent others from using the word libertarian uh, in certain elections and things like that using trademark law. Uh, so they're basically using trademark law as to violate freedom of speech. Now, one of the comments from the chat on this subject is from Brew City Liberty. I'm glad Ron Paul is doing this shit. It shows he's not a holy relic. Hopefully the Ron Paul zombies will start accepting, let's see, I'm sorry, accepting his ideals rather than him. Is I mean, is it true that this is, that, that this is, is a failure of Ron Paul to live up to his own ideals then? Uh... I have no idea. I don't know if Ron Paul has ever been um, against uh, IP or certainly trademark, um, uh, although he, he, the, the trademark he's asserting, by the way, is not a – he doesn't have a registered trademark. Uh, my guess is he's going to lose this suit, by the way, and he'll wish he had just bought the site. Um, he's got two causes of action in his complaint, which I've read. One is that the owner um, has no legitimate interest in the domain, which – is clearly not the case here. It's not just a cyber squatter trying to shake him down. They were just – they have a legitimate site, um, and they offered it to him only because they heard him express interest, and in they even offered to give him ronpaul.org for free. So I don't think they fit the profile of a typical uh, cyber squatter like you know someone gets tomcruise.com right. and tries to shake down someone. The second complaint is based upon trademark, and he claims that he owns the common law trademark right to Ron Paul. He has no federal or state registration in a registered trademark that I'm aware of. He doesn't mention it in the complaint. So that complaint is probably a little bit stronger, but I think it's a little shakier because he doesn't have a federal uh, registration. Um, but yeah, I mean it's uh, – I don't know whose decision this is, but these guys are supporters. Uh, it looks like to me it's upsetting a lot of supporters. Um, to me it's just an illustration of the injustice of – trademark, patent, and copyright. And by the way, the trademark idea is based upon the idea that you own a name. Um, now, w w why does – I mean there's lots of Ron Pauls out there. Why should he be the one that can seize this domain from these guys? Uh, and, and if you talk to libertarians, they're very confused on these issues. They'll always say, well, I'm against plagiarism as if that justifies copyright law when copyright law has nothing whatsoever to do with plagiarism. Which is plagiarism fraud. Plagiarism is just dishonesty. Right. Uh, it's not even fraud. And then they'll say trademark law is based upon fraud because you're, you're, you're defrauding customers. Well, well, then just use fraud law if that's all. If, if it's based right. upon fraud law, then show who ronpaul.com is defrauding. Has there ever been a single customer 
that claims they're being defrauded. There's a disclaimer saying they're not affiliated with Ron Paul. Right. So it's no it's one a fan goes, site no one right at the with, top. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, it, 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 specifically at ronpaul.com, right in the banner it says fan site. Gentlemen, uh, do you guys have any, any thoughts or, or questions for Stefan on this issue? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I know last night you guys talked about the uh, mailing list for the, the site, which is obviously worth... 180,000 plus names, and, and that in and of itself is in the value of hundred, that, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is that forced over to Ron Paul if he wins the suit? I doubt it. In fact, I, I, I doubt it. Yeah, he would have no claim to, an, to, to like, that, that would be like trying to claim the inventory of products. You know, it's a separate thing. He, the, the intellectual property or, or what, the claim itself for the name I don't think it would have anything to do with the email. No, list. I think it's got nothing to do with that's a trade secret. In fact, the, I, I don't know the, the details of their terms of service or how they acquired this information, but uh, and I assume they acquired it, uh, you know, voluntarily and in an open way. But it could be that there's a term of service that would prevent them from releasing the information. You know, some people could legitimately complain, "Hey, I didn't want you selling this information." But I assume he, they have some weasel words in there. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not saying these. I don't know who these guys are. I'm not saying they're the best guys in the world. Um, uh, I'm not even into politics. I, I don't follow this stuff, um, <laughs> uh, partly for this kind of reason. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, these guys have to be disillusioned right now. I mean, you, you know, it, it, in a way, they should just give it to them because they may not want to support them anymore. They may have no need for the name anymore, but I suspect they will um, carry on. But maybe with reduced enthusiasm. Joel, how does uh, Ron Paul, the former United States congressman, have such a claim on this? And you mentioned common law versus Ron Paul, who lives in Minnesota, who's a plumber and has the same exact name as Ron Paul. He can't be the only Ron Paul in the in, this, in the world. The way, the way trademarks work, um, uh, they arose. They arose unlike patent and copyright, which are purely creatures of stat statute or legislation. And are rooted in uh, patent was rooted in protectionism. Uh, you know, the government, the crown granting monopolies to their cronies as favors. Um, and copyright arose in censorship, the attempt to control what books could be printed. I mean, the patent and copyright are utterly horrible and abysmal intrusions on the free market. Uh, trademark arose in the common law, um, and it arose because of a kind of confused idea about the value of a, a reputation and this kind of stuff. So I think it's wrong, but it's not rooted in the same ideas. But the basis of it in today's law is that if you use a mark in commerce over a period of time in a certain geographic region, then you acquire common law trademark rights in it. But then if you file a registration with the federal government or with your state, then you can extend it to a certain degree. But even if you don't, you have rights in it. And then there's also – it's a stronger right if it's so-called a famous mark, like Coca-Cola is famous now. So I guess the argument is that someone like Madonna or Michael Jackson or Tom Cruise or I guess Ron Paul um, has used their name in connection with a, a profit-making venture over a period of time, like the sale of merchandise or something like that, and moreover that it's famous. And therefore, he is the one that owns this trademark um, which I guess would mean that someone couldn't run for office if they happened to be named Ron Paul uh, as a libertarian or maybe at all because they're you know, doing the same thing he did and using his name. I don't know. I, I guess that means Rand Paul has a license implicitly from his dad to use the name Paul to become famous. <laughs> right. I the mean, implications of, of intellectual property taken to their logical – I should say illogical conclusions are pretty ridiculous and frightening. <laughs> Stefan, let me just ask uh, just one last question because you've already said that you don't think Ron is uh, – Dr. Paul is actually going to win his case uh, when, it, when it goes before a panel or, or uh, an individual judge. What do you think is going to happen afterwards, and what advice would you have for Dr. Paul in, in getting through this? And, and you know, I, I, I hope that he's able to – get past this as bad as it has been for his credibility. He says he's working on starting a web show. I welcome more voices to the conversation. Having Ron Paul on the internet doing something on a regular basis would be awesome. But uh, after this, it's almost like the site itself is tainted. So what, what advice would you have for him in resolving this? Well, you know, I've been a fan of Paul for years. I like the guy a lot. I think he's, he's fantastic. He's you know, probably the best 
congressman we've ever had um, in the country and the, probably the best we can expect to have for a long time. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos, who founded Amazon, is a big opponent of software patents. Even though Amazon acquired the one-click patent, if you remember, that was notorious a few years ago. And in fact, just a couple of days ago, Amazon got a new patent that permits it to re to control the reselling of ebooks. Now, wrap your head around that idea that you have an ebook, which is a digital file, and you want to resell it. But to resell a e file means you have to destroy your copy. It's just trying to use this, you know. Anyway, the point is they're acquiring software patents while Jeff Bezos has said we need to abolish software patents mm -hmm. or cut the term down to three years. Um, so I don't blame him for the system existing. In fact, he's against it. So it, the only advice I would give is I would say what would be great is if Ron Paul would come out and explicitly announce that he is totally opposed – to intellectual property because it's an intrusion on the free market. How he uses it in, in the real world, you know, is a practical matter or a personal ethical decision. Um, I, you know, it looks to me like this is causing a backlash, but again, I'm not part of the, I don't follow politics that much. And I, I'm not disillusioned by politicians when they, when they do things like this because I don't have hope in politicians in the first place. But um, I, I think he needs to come out against IP especially trademark law, at least federal trademark law, which is totally unconstitutional because the Constitution only authorizes patent and copyright. It does not authorize um, trademark, which is why we still have state trademark law because the federal government passed the Lanham Act based upon the Interstate Commerce Clause. So they only regulate trademarks when it affects interstate commerce. But on the Internet, everything affects interstate commerce. So right. the federal government could really get rid of state trademark law tomorrow if they wanted to, and that I wouldn't be surprised if they someday do that and totally monopolize it like they've done for patent and copyright. So I think he needs to come out again. Look, in my opinion, patent and copyright and even trademark are probably the number six most evil thing the state does right now after um, war – taxes, the drug war, the Federal Reserve, and government education. I mean, it is up there with the top six, and it needs to be attacked and completely opposed by every defender of liberty and free markets and private property rights. Well, it's also unconstitutional because the intellectual property clause of the Constitution itself is unconstitutional because it contradicts the First Amendment. But I, I, I agree completely. I, and I'm, I'm with you. I hope that Dr. Paul uh, takes this as an opportunity to make a teachable moment out of it and raise the issue of intellectual property. And, uh, you know, I, I, if, if maybe he sets it up right and, and, and comes out and, and uh, you know, either puts it in proper context or apologizes or something, maybe maybe he can make good on, uh, out of this and, and have the, uh, you know, really take advantage of this opportunity to make good with, with so many supporters of his that, that he has shown this kind of disregard to. Because any, any way you cut it, you, you're right. It's It's using some form of coercion to steal what is rightfully the property of those who have put so much effort into building that site, who, uh, like myself, as, as for my personal experience with veterans for Ron Paul, uh, ended up greatly disillusioned by the attitude of what we thought was simply his staff, but really is on uh, the good doctor himself for, for his own relationship to those who support him. Stefan, thank you so much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, Stefan Kinsella. Um, please check him out at the website. You have uh, stephankinsella.com? Yes. There you go, stephankinsella.com. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. You just have to get one neocon at a time no, 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 no. to put down to, the guns of government. Don't. You, as a free, beautiful, independent human being with inalienable rights, own yourself. Why don't you sit down and like study some of the things that Mitt Romney actually teaches?